Well, there's a long and drawn out process which is very meticulous and it looks not only at what the level of loss and the disability of the patient is, but also what their abilities are in, in uh, t terms of what they can cope with, what they understand, what they're, likely to, what they're likely to be able to face in the way of adversity and overcome. And of course, crucial to everything is the biological suitability. They have to be suitable immunologically for a hand transplant. Um, and very often that is the barrier that we, we uh, have, have most trouble with. And what about a case like the boy in Baltimore? How does it differ uh, when you've got a child involved? We decided, and I think most units have, have, have decided, not to extend the programme for children. Uh, I think in the light of the United States experience and Scott Levin's experience there, we will continue to review that. Um, the big difference between ad adults and children from the point of view of hand transplantation is firstly of course they have to understand and be compliant and have some idea of what they're getting into uh, and and that's a, a standard we apply within the adult population but also in a child you have all, all, all the issues surrounding growth and the effects of the immunosuppressive drugs upon growth and their health so there's a more there's a more complex balance between the gains and the, the disadvantages. But I would just add one thing, which is that the gains in a child are potentially substantially more because of the very great way in which they rehabilitate and heal. So potentially that means there could be a greater chance of success. But what about the transplanted hands themselves? Do they age and grow along with the child? They will age and they will grow with the child because presumably the child and, and from, from what I know, I spoke with, with one of the team yesterday in the United States, the, the match in t terms of age and size is, is very good and I would expect the biological age of the hands to continue to age at the same rate as the biological age of the child. And take us through the actual procedure itself, because obviously a very painstaking and lengthy operation involved. Well, um, yes, we should probably just summarise it. Um, the, the first thing is that you're, you're, you're alerted to the presence of a donor who is potentially suitable, and then we go through a rigorous process of cross-matching and establishing the immunological and, and uh, the physical suitability. The retrieval of the organs then takes place along with the retrieval of other organs that are, that are gifted by that in, in individual. And at the same time, the uh, recipient, either adult or child, will, will be in the operating theatre and prepared. And then the two come together and the two teams, those that retrieve the organs and those that prepare the child, then, then unite to become one team and then it's really just routine microsurgery. It, uh, it's joining up the bones, the tendons, the vessels, the nerves. Um, it's, it's what we do day in, day out. And what then are the chances of success? And, and what sort of functionality do you expect someone with a double hand transplant to have eventually? In the, um, in the well-matched individual with the well-executed surgery at the correct level, excuse me for hedging it with all of those as uh, caveats, I, I, I would expect rapid return of some function and slower but good return of other function. In our transplant that took place two and a half years ago, uh, Mark, who's the, the recipient, has now gained extremely good auto automatic use of his hand with good sensibility, fine motor movement, power and control. In a child, I would expect the recovery to be very much quicker and very much more complete. But uh, as one of your potential patients was telling us earlier, there is involved in this, isn't there, a lifetime of aftercare? It is a lifetime of uh, aftercare, exactly as if you had a re renal transplant or a, or, 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 or a liver transplant. And of course, exactly the same as if you had an artificial limb, which is a lifetime of maintenance and care and, um, and uh, re repair of the limb. So when you lose a limb, whatever modality you choose 
who supplant it and replace it, you have a lifetime commitment to the aftercare of your device or your limb and the management of your reduced ability. You mentioned there you've spoken to one of the team involved in the transplant in Baltimore. How does it make you and your team feel seeing that success? Um, I'm extremely pleased for them. I think it, it's, it's a wonderful team there. Um, they're, they're extremely diligent and, and uh, very competent. They haven't had the barriers that we have in terms of the organisation to deal with, as far as I can tell. Um, where we're at in Great Britain is that having conducted the first transplant, we're now with N NHS England, who are being extremely, um, extremely thorough about the process of commissioning this surgery. We're now going through the process of understanding um, who will do the surgery and on what type of case. And I'm pleased to say that specialist commissioners in Britain have now agreed that hand transplantation will be commissioned. Extremely encouraging news. Professor Simon Kate, it's been great to talk to you here in Sky very, News tonight. Very Thank encouraging. you.